The asbestos issue is not a thing of the past. It, it continues to this day. We want to end this man-made disaster. So let's ban asbestos. I'm glad to be here with you. I've read some of your stories this week and heard some more last evening and then again this morning. And I'm humbled by your courage and your love and by the path you walk. Grief work is noble work. Grief work is the most difficult work we are asked to do as human beings. I have no balm to soothe your pain. What I can offer you is some simple practices to help you on your journey and ways to keep moving forward. This journey, as you know, is not linear. It twists and turns and spirals up and down. So the work I'm describing here this afternoon is work for everyone in the room. It's for the families, the person who is ill and their caregivers, and for all the advocates who work diligently on their behalf. It affects us all. So back to our mothers. She knew some things. Um, we need to take care of ourselves. Caring for ourselves includes caring for your mind, caring for your body, and caring for your heart. Together, this list represents a foundation for wellness and for giving us the strength to do well each day, to live the best we can on any given day. Grief takes a lot of work, a lot of energy. We need fuel, we need rest, and we need trusted friends. Feel free to add to the list and make it your own. For healing, it is essential that we stay present to life as it is. There's a difference between thinking about the pain of loss and actually feeling the pain of loss. There's a saying in death circles, death and dying circles, I've worked in hospice for over 20 years um, with patients and their families and also with staff. Um, and there's a saying um, that is commonly heard, pay me now or pay me later. We need to lean into the pain. We have to ha let it have its way with us. But we don't need to do it all at once. We can chunk it down. We can pace ourselves. A good example of this is Maury from Tuesday with Maury's. Some of you are probably familiar with the book and movie that it was popular in the States and still is very helpful to folks on a tough journey. Maury was an ALS patient and um, the book is comprised of conversations that he had with uh, a close friend of his who had been a previous student. And when asked, and I recommend it, there's, there's a lot of love and life there and practical suggestions. Um, when asked how he dealt with loss and grief and the devastation that ALS was, was ravishing on his body and his mind and, and on his family, he responded, well, I give myself about 10 minutes in the morning. I rail against it. I cry out and I give myself time for a good cry if I need it. And then he said, I decide to have a good day. And he moved on into the rest of his day. This is a practice.
Another example is Randy Posh, who wrote the last lecture. The last lecture is a love letter to his children, um, chock full of wisdom um, for their journey that he wasn't going to be around to offer in person. Um, his, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at 36 years old and had uh, three small children. His response was, I can't change the diagnosis, but I can change how I respond to it. He wrote the last lecture. Again, I recommend it. It's chock full of wisdom for our journey as well as his children's journey. For your journal, you might consider a grief journal. It's a, it's a journal for you alone to write your rage without censorship, including from yourself, especially from yourself, to write your sorrow, write your pain, draw pictures. Um, it's a powerful way to vent feelings and to let this energy move through you. You also have a record with a grief journal um, as you revisit it, maybe at three months, six months, five years, you'll see the journey you've been on and you'll be able to notice your progress and know that you're moving forward. If you get stuck, if you get stuck, give yourself um, the opportunity, uh, um, see, seek out a grief counselor um, and uh, let them help you get moving again. Um, another possibility is in Bigger Conversations, our program, we have uh, caregiver wellness circles that also has a grief component. And it's a program that helps uh, folks move through grief, deal with and move through grief and, and let go and move forward. And again, this isn't a linear process, as you know. You might consider acupuncture or massage. Um, acupuncture helps move the energy of the emotions through you. Um, and massage can help, um, and both can help alleviate some of the physical symptoms of grief. Um, give yourself breaks like Mari did. Give yourself a bit of time to, to go into the pain and then perhaps you wanna go outside. If you're not getting outside, I really encourage going outside to a park even for five or 10 minutes a day. I also highly recommend music of any kind of your choice. It goes straight to the heart and it moves us. It can help us move emotions forward and out. Distractions, these are just a few. You may have others. We all have our favorites. All of these can become addictive and take us away from life. Overuse will thwart our forward movement and our healing. So I'm not saying don't do any of these, I'm saying limit, moderation. So uh, on the tools for the journey, I'm going to uh, introduce you, and some of you may be familiar with some of these. Um, these are practices that help you stay in the present moment and practices that help you stay present to life just as it is. Um, they're also practices for living fully. There are two rules to these practices. Be kind to yourself and no guilt. The first is practice conscious breathing. It's a way to come back to our body, to our senses, and to the present moment. Taking a simple break to breathe in and notice your breath. And exhale. You're back in your body. You're right here, right now. Do it three times. Set a daily intention like Maury. Set the intention in the morning. It can be anything that's right for you. Review it in the evening without judgment. Maybe you forgot it all day long, your intention. Just notice, no guilt, and do it again tomorrow. This again is a practice for structuring your day, setting a tone. 
Practice open-heartedness. Practice keeping your heart open to whomever and whatever shows up that day. This is a big one. Um, prayer and meditation, whatever this means to you. It pr pr prayer and meditation provides a means for going within, for reflection, for asking for help, whatever you wish. And, and creating rituals. Um, these can be simple. You can create your own. You don't need your priest um, or priestess or, or ministers. Um, you want to keep it simple. Maybe a trusted friend. Maybe you're alone. Keep it short and it's powerful as you practice with an open heart. Touch. Allow yourself to be nourished by the touch and presence of others. Often we pull into ourselves. Allow others to nourish you. Your senses connect you to the human family. The Caregiver Wellness website, or the Bigger Conversation website, um, provides information on our caregiver wellness programs, and that gives you resources. We have an ongoing list, an expanding list of resources to help you with these tools and to support you on your journey. Through the process of in introspection, we can transform grief into wisdom and lead into gold. At some point on this journey, falling apart is the only rational act. It may feel like insanity, or drowning, or a shattering, or even like dying. As we let go, we surrender into the unknown. We surrender to the truth of what is. In the darkness resides awareness. That still small voice within us that has always been there, it calls us deeper to go even deeper until we reconnect with our true selves. With this reunion, we are on our way to mending and healing into wholeness. We don't get over the loss, but the pain does change. Once it was unbearable, and then one day we realized we can breathe with a little more ease and gradually we move towards living fully. This too is a practice. We want to, when we notice that we're more and more open to possibilities in life and we, our curiosity comes back for life's journey, you'll know these as signs, any of these as signs of your healing and moving towards wholeness. Bigger Conversations has a website, a Facebook page, and resources to help you. These other, the other four um, resources are resources I recommend. They're particularly helpful with the practices that I introduced here today. They're practical um, guides to take you through and, and support you on the journey. They too are also listed on the Bigger Conversations website. I'm glad to talk with any of you while I'm here at the, con uh, at the comfort conference. I'm here till breakfast tomorrow and you can contact me um, through Bigger Conversations if I don't see you here if you wish to talk or communicate by email. Thank you all so much.